What's up everybody? You know, I want to spend a few minutes with you guys to talk about what's being considered now one of the dying breeds of the industry is a spinnerbait and you know I want to talk about some of the key components of a spinnerbait and try to convince you guys this is something that you absolutely need to keep in your tackle box um, year round into the future you know a lot of people are going to vibrate and jigs and chatterbait styles and they're just getting away from a spinnerbait and, and guys you know do not let this spinnerbait get out of your you know get out of your tackle box it can be so effective um, and for many different reasons. And the first part of a spinnerbait that you really need to understand is there's really three components to a spinnerbait and you need to ensure that these match up to the conditions, the forage, and the type of cover that you're trying to fish so you can get the most effective, you know, the most effective use out of the spinnerbait. You know, there really there's two main components of, of that a bass feeds on. You know, so there's a couple of senses that they use to feed on. Uh, one is sight and the other one is sound or vibration. Sound or vibration is actually felt through the lateral lines of a bass and then of course sight as well. And there's actually three components on this spinnerbait that you need to, play, to pay really close attention to. You know, one is the sound part and typically the type of the blade or a Colorado blade is, is more of the rounded that's going to give you the vibration in the water. Sometimes you see just one on there, sometimes you see double, sometimes you see just a single one on there. The other part is the sight part and that's typically your willow leaf part that's on the bottom. This is really what puts out a lot of the flash that the fish can see and a lot of times this and the body of the spinnerbait is what you're trying to mimic the forage for. So a lot of times this willow leaf can mimic a thread fin shad which is probably the most common types of shad that's in the body of the water that we fish. And then of course the other part of it is the actual body. So make sure that we keep this the same size and the, the, the same color scheme for the types of shad, the types of forage that they're fishing, you know, that the fish are eating at that point. And this, and you also change this setting for water clarity and conditions um, um, to make sure you're getting the most use out of it. So, you know, you know, you know, if you guys follow me, of course, in the Bassmaster Classic, you saw that I was throwing this one right here, which this right here is a Delta Lures, um, Delta Lures spinnerbait, double Colorado with an orange kick, with an orange kicker. And as you can see, I was throwing. This is a Reactions Innovation a Little Dipper in white trash, bright, colorful, a lot of vibration. This is my favorite spinnerbait to throw, cold, muddy water situations um, with the trailer. Um, um, in order I can keep this thing in the strike zone uh, a lot longer than I can with say a double a tandem willow leaf or something like that you know this one I can slow roll this thing and um, and keep this in the strike zone a whole lot you know a whole lot longer now trailers um, I throw a trailer on this one now trailer creates drag a trailer and the Colorado leaf creates drag you really can't reel these things very fast because of the drag that's puts in the water it holds the bait. If you try to reel it fast, it'll bring it up to the surface. Um, but in that situation, I want drag. I want to be able to slow roll this thing, keep it in the strike zone longer. Unlike um, um, unlike a one like this, this is the one that you guys saw me using at Lake Fork uh, this past week. You know, got a top 15 finish off of it. But I was able to reel this thing, you know, a little faster. I was not throwing a trailer on this thing because of a few reasons. One is I was fishing, if you guys can tell, I was actually fishing submerged hydrilla. There was submerged vegetation in that place. And that's what those fish were keying on. And I wanted this bait to stay down in the water column um, so I could keep it just on the edge of that grass. Um, but I could also reel this thing kind of fast if I needed to as well to get that reaction bite. Um, so. You know, with that being said, that's why I was not throwing a trailer with this thing. If I'd have added a trailer to it, I would have had to slow my speed down because that trailer will actually create drag, bring that spinnerbait um, up in the water column, and I wasn't able to keep that thing down. So that's why I was throwing this particular setup. Now, what a lot of people couldn't tell was, you know, the first two days of that tournament, we had cloudy, windy conditions, and I was able, and this is what I was catching them on with that single little Colorado blade. Now, the third day, we had complete opposite conditions. We had high bright skies and no wind. And what you guys couldn't tell is I actually went to a tandem um, willow leaf, two willow leaves on there to create more flash. I could reel this thing a little bit faster in order to get a little, in order to get some reaction bite to it. 
so that's why I was changing this thing. So, so guys, so again, you know, pay attention to the key components on that thing. Cold, muddy water, get really muddy, and those fish get really, you know, get up shallow. I want to be able to slow roll something with a lot of vision. They can see this thing good. They can feel it good. Keep it in the strike zone long, longer. So you get into the better clarity of water, and you're, and you're fishing, say, you know, some submerged vegetation or some specific cover that's off the bank. I like to go something with a little more slender profile, something that I can reel a little bit quicker, and it also mimics the bait fish that they're using. Now, the second part of this is that you really need to pay attention to with a spinner bait is your equipment and your setup that you're using for these things. Really close attention to this because um, a spinner bait, you know, where you're keeping it in the water column has a lot to do with your line size as well. I'll throw this spinner bait, guys, anywhere from 12 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is absolutely the key because you want to make sure you get the hook in that fish. This setup right here for Lake Four, guys, I was throwing this on 12 pound fluorocarbon, and a lot of people's eyes got big when they heard that I was throwing it on that. But I was throwing submerged hydrilla. I needed that bait to stay down in the water column, um, and I could make really accurate casts and long casts with that. So now, 12 pound fluorocarbon, you have to make sure that you're compensating in your rod to be able to still get that hook in it. I was throwing this thing on a seven foot St. Croix Legend Extreme. A lot of guys throw moderate action rod with a moderate tip on a spinner bait. Guys, this setup, you need to make sure you have a fast tip. This is a moderate, um, this is a moderate action St. Croix Legend Extreme, but it's got a fast tip on it because that way when that fish grabs it and I set the hook, it still has the strength to put the hook in, hook, hook in it even with um, even with 12 pound fluorocarbon. And guys, you know, that, that day two, I caught that seven and a half. Um, it actually got me wrapped around a bush. 12 pound fluorocarbon is extremely strong, guys. I was able to get to that bush, walk that fish back around, and it, and it was fine. I have a lot of confidence in that line. And um, and a lot of people, you know, kind of raised their eyebrow when I told them 12 pound test, but, but you, know, to, you know, being methodical with it, make sure you're making up and compensated for it with the correct rod action is extremely important. Now, if I'm fishing around a lot of wood, of course, I'm gonna go 15, and if I'm fishing around a lot of heavy cover, then of course, I'll go with even as heavy as a 17 on that. And then for the bigger spinner baits, you know, like, the, like I told you, the Delta Lure spinner bait that I was using during a Classic, um, this is actually a 7-1 Mojo Bass, moderate action, still a fast tip. I like a fast tip on a spinner bait. I can make a little bit longer cast. Um, it's a little heavier spinner bait. Um, and I, I was throwing this thing in the classic on 15 pound fluorocarbon because I was catching them around a lot of wood um, But very effective, but guys, you know making sure that you understand The key components of a spinner bait and how each one of them need to match up To what you're trying to do and where these fish are at are very important These are going to make the difference of getting a bite and not getting a bite the more stained the water is the more sound you need, the more Colorado blades, and even the double Colorado if you get to that extremely muddy water and they're shallow, up until the clearer water you get, the faster retrieve, all the way to the double Colorado. And what a lot of you guys couldn't see on Lake Fork, I actually had a chatterbait tied on on my front deck, and guys, even practice and even during the tournament, I would pick that, I'd pick a chatterbait up periodically, and those fish just would not eat that chatterbait. They wanted this thing right here. Um, and so again, guys, Spinner bait. Make sure you keep that in your tackle box, and make sure that you understand that there are key components.